Good evening, I'm Brady Gallagher. Coming up in the newscast, state senators approve a new transportation bill and a former Alabama mother is being charged for child endangerment in Pennsylvania. And I'm Steve Majeri with an update on wrestling, men's cross country and men's basketball. We also have Kyle Ashenfelder with your Kutztown weather forecast. News break begins now. State senators approved a major transportation spending proposal. The proposal is a $2.3 billion bill that will modernize travel in Pennsylvania through repairing roads and bridges. The proposal could leave Pennsylvania with some of the highest fuel taxes in the nation and higher motorist fees. The, propo the proposal could also raise taxes on gasoline and fees on registration and licensing. The debate for the legalization of marijuana heats up as Kutztown hosted Heads versus Feds with both sides of legalization presented. Newsbreak's Mike Souter has more. Recently, the Association of Campus Events hosted a debate on a legalization of marijuana entitled Heads versus Feds. Steve Hager, editor of High Times Magazine, on veteran DEA agent Robert Stutman on the issues of marijuana legalization. Hager and Stutman go head-to-head -head on this issue many times a year as they tour college campuses, giving their opinions in this informational production. But we do believe, with all our heart and soul, that marijuana is the sacrament of our culture because it helps us chill out bad situations. But what does Kutztown campus think about this controversial topic? Yeah, I think, honestly, it's the equivalent to like alcohol in the sense that people regularly use it and how often it's used. If anything, it's safer, in my opinion. You leave it up to the people in that case. Um, I don't necessarily think it should be legalized, but um, I do believe it should be only for medical uses. And on top of that, I think it should be decriminalized in every state of the United States. Under federal law, marijuana is still considered illegal. But with 58% of Americans supporting legalization, everyone has an opinion. Absolutely, I think pot should be legalized. I don't see any harm in pot. I think it's good for medical use for people that are sick. It could help them get better and also pot's fun and it does no harm to people. It should absolutely be legalized. We supplement our mood with anything. So what's the difference between that and a plant? It's because a bunch of men in black robes decided that we can't have that, but we can have these. KU would like to thank Heads vs. Feds for hosting the event as the debate for medical marijuana continues. With Newsbreak, I'm Mike Souter. After an entire decade, an Alabama mother is being charged and tried in Pennsylvania after her two-and-a-half-month-old child died due to a skull fracture. At the time of the incident, the child Christopher Dylan Harbin was being cared for by his grandfather, Donald Harbin, in Allentown when he was found by his daughter-in-law, who claimed that the baby was not breathing. Wendy Stanford is being charged with homicide and child endangerment. We'll have more information on the story as it develops. I can't believe she was able to get away with that for a whole decade. Yeah, I mean, at least justice has been served, but it should have been done way before that. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back after this. My check. Every Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Fridays at 1 p.m. Be sure to tune in Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. to catch co-hosts Devin Raventoss and Eddie Richard as they travel around the Berks County and Lehigh Valley area, exploring some great places to visit. Camera One re-airs Wednesdays at 7.30 and Fridays at 12.30. Don't miss it!
So I need to get a new jacket because it's getting really, really cold outside. It's been freezing up, but it's near that time of year. Yeah. Kyle, is it going to get any warmer this weekend? Well, Steve, it's cold, and I think it's going to stay there. I think finally Mother Nature has made up her mind, and the weather is going to be pretty constant. But we did have a pretty warm day today. We had a high of 53 degrees. It was pretty cloudy out, so not much sunlight. Now, tonight we have a 30% chance of precipitation, so if you're going to be outside, make sure to have an umbrella or have a raincoat because you might get a little wet. Now, going into tomorrow, we have a 50% chance of rain, so flip a coin. And, well, there, there's your chances. And we'll also have a high of 57 tomorrow and a low of 34. Pretty warm weather there. Now, let's go into this weekend and going into next week. And on Saturday, we'll have a part, partly cloudy day with a high of 45 degrees and a low of 22. And then on Sunday, we'll have a cloudy day with a high of 29 degrees and a low of 17. So it's going to get a little colder there. And then on Monday, another partly cloudy day with a high of 34 and a low of 25. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, both days, we're going to have a little bit of a chance of snow and rain. On Tuesday, we have a 50% chance of snow or rain, so you never know. Flip a coin. Who knows what might happen that day. And we have a high of 41 on that day and another high of 41 on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we have a 40% chance of snow. Not a chance of rain, but a 40% chance of snow. So, kids, you might get to make your snowmen early this year. It's going to be a great time, hopefully. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Kyle. A Kutztown couple was recently honored by the Kutztown Area Historical Society for restoring a historical local building known as Levin's Tavern, which dates back to the 1740s. The Society's members, President Darlene Moyer, Librarian Brendan Strazer, and his wife Meredith Martin presented renovators Brandy Woodard and Bert Savory with a plaque to honor them for restoring one of Kutztown's oldest and most historical buildings. They restored the building on Kutztown Road in Maxitani Township and opened the Nectar's Cafe and Juice Bar at the Yoga House. Kutztown's very own dance team will be representing the university in Philadelphia's annual Thanksgiving Day Parade next week. They have been selected to perform during a special production that will start and finish the parade right outside of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Dancers Megan Brown, Jade Cortez, Emily Cruz, Rachel Davis, Megan Devlin, and Amber Ditzler, Jessica Fox, Morgan Greenwood, Kayla Hansen, Brianna Miller, Samantha Miller, Felicia Nelson, Casey Norton, Ryan Pagliero, Jamie Reagan, Hannah Stolle, Gabrielle Swart, Megan Valley, Monica Warity, and Christina Wolfgang will represent Kutztown. If you're in the Philly area during the parade, don't forget to support your fellow Golden Bears. I won't be able to make it to the Philly parade, but I'll try to tune in on TV to watch our yeah, dancers. I actually live very close to Philly, so if I can, I definitely should try to make, uh, make it out to see that. Coming up next in sports, wrestling continues its path towards national, and men's basketball played their home opener last night. We'll be right back with more after this. I'm Adam, and I have your three-minute drill on BTL. Hey, I'm Kara, and I'll be taking you around campus for student interviews on Outside the Lines. I'm Alyssa, and I'll be rounding up the latest sporting events on Weekend Update. Hi, my name is Dylan, and I have your top play of the week on BTL. Hi, I'm Jared. And I'm Zoe. And we're your hosts for Halftime. I'm Steve. And we're the host of Between the Lines. Tune in Wednesdays and Thursdays at 7. And Fridays at noon for all the latest breaking KU sports updates. And remember, being outside the lines only gets you the scores. But here at Between the Lines, we get you in the locker room.
And now to sports, where the Christown University wrestling team continues to pave its journey towards nationals when it travels to take on Pitt Johnstown tomorrow night. The Golden Bears are coming off a strong performance at the East Strasburg Open last weekend, where four Golden Bears placed in the top ten in their respective weight classes. Sophomore heavyweight Daniel Ortiz was the big name of the day, as he went 5-0 and took home the heavyweight crown at the tournament. The preseason national favorite at the heavyweight spot, Ziad Haddad, went 4-1 and advanced to the championship round, where he lost to teammate Ortiz in a no contest. In the 165 slot, junior Justin Heller finished fourth, and Andrew Kinney earned a sixth place finish. At 174, Bo Candelaria had a busy day as he wrestled in six matches while winning four of them. The Golden Bears will look to build on their success in their first true challenge of the season against the Mountain Cats, who are currently ranked eighth nationally. This has all the makings of a classic, said the, as the 12th and 8th ranked teams in the country will lock horns. The first match will take place at 7 p.m. Now to men's cross country, where senior Zach Fleming will be the lone representative of the Golden Bears at the NCAA Championships on Saturday in Spokane, Washington. It's been a very interesting journey for Fleming, who started running cross country his senior year of high school with three years remaining, or three weeks remaining, excuse me. From then on, his career blossomed. Fleming plans to go full throttle in his final collegiate race, as he will end his historic career on Saturday. Fleming has maintained a strong level of mental stability in his preparation for nationals, as they are the first time he has ever traveled to them. In an interview with KUBears.com's Imani Ferguson, Fleming said that his goal is to finish atop the mountain, and I quote, I am honestly not trying to think too much about it, but I thought about a few goals like getting All-American, which is top 40. Anything from 30 to 40 minutes, but if I can break 30 minutes, that would be amazing, end quote. The starting gun is scheduled to go off at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time as Fleming will look to have a storybook ending to an already illustrious career. And now for some hoops. Men's basketball dropped their home opener last night at Wilmington University by a final score of 76-70. Tracy Peel matched his career high of 20 points, which he ironically scored against Wilmington last season. Freshman Austin Beetleman chipped in with 11, and Tyler Brooks contributed with 8. Dennis Herbert led Wilmington with 19 points, while Henry Shy had 15. KU's offense was heavily fueled by its defense as they scored 30 points off of Wilmington turnovers. KU was also able to use their defense to get out and run as they scored 16 points off of fast break points in contrast to Wilmington's 9. KU stayed in the game throughout the second half as they kept the deficit within 10 points throughout the half. The Golden Bears will need to shake this one off quickly as they will travel to host perennial rival East Stroudsburg on Saturday to open up interdivisional play. The Warriors sit atop the PSAC East with a 5-0 record and are led by Wiss Grant who leads the team in scoring at 15 a game and recently eclipsed to the 1,000 point mark. ESU has had great success in the PSAC over the past few years and should be this young Golden Bear team's first true test of the season. Tip-off is at 3 p.m. at Keystone Hall. That's all for sports, and remember to log on to KUBarris.com for all the latest in KU athletics. That's all we have for you tonight. We'll see you again after Thanksgiving. For Brady, Kyle, and the rest of the crew, good night. Good night.